So here we are in week four of Music Technology Foundations. And this week, we're going to explore creating our own sounds and particularly synthesis. Yeah, I guess uh, some people will be wondering exactly what synthesis is. Basically, it's making sound waves electronically. Synthesizer is a device the, to make sound electronically. Some of them have keyboards, some of them don't, uh, but they all have inside them the electronics you need to generate sound waves. Yeah, and if we think back to the mid 20th century, you know, the roots of sort of electronic music uh, as we know it, really there were two trains of thought. One focused on recorded sounds, which you know we've been looking at over the last couple of weeks, and uh, you know was championed by composers. Uh, like Pierre Schaeffer and Pierre Henry, but if you look at the work of Karl Heinz Stockhausen, he had a quite a radically different approach to that, where it was really all about synthesizing his own sounds that we'd never heard before. Yes, that's right. Um, in Music Revolutionaries uh, for this week, I'll be looking at some of the pioneers of uh, synthesis, in particular Robert Moog and Tristram Carey. Yeah, and learners will also get an opportunity to get hands-on uh, with the synthesizer with Christian and incorporate some uh, of their own sounds into their creative work. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And one of the things we'll be looking at pretty closely is the different kinds of synthesizer, different components, and the different types of synthesis. For example, we've got additive synthesis, we've got subtractive synthesis, we've got different kinds of modulation synthesis as well. For example, frequency modulation synthesis, that's FM synthesis, amplitude modulation, and also ring modulation. Yeah, ring modulation is probably my favourite. It was used in Doctor Who to make the Dalek and Cybermen voices. Yeah, that's right, Luke. Exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. Exterminate, 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 exterminate. You can also make some really great bell-like tones as well. Very, very true. And there's also uh, granular synthesis, where the sound is synthesized from tiny little pieces or grains of uh, sound, kind of thing that was pioneered by Greek uh, composer Yanis Xenakis. Yeah, if we think about a typical uh, synthesizer, basically they've got three major parts. We've got sound sources, sound modifiers, and output. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, if we think about the sound sources of a synthesizer, which is used as the core of the kind of new sounds that we're making, um, you've got oscillators that can produce different types of electronic waves, things like sine waves or square waves or triangle waves, for example. Um, and also noise generators that can be create sort of random bursts of sound, things like white noise or pink noise. Yes, and uh, when you think about the modifiers or treatments of that sound, you've got, for example, filtering. So there are filters we call high-pass filters that let high frequencies through. There are low-pass filters that let low frequencies through and other kinds of band-pass filters as well. And then you've also got um, ways of modulating the sound. Probably the most common of those is the LFO, or Low Frequency Oscillator, which is typically an, an oscillator producing a wave below uh, 100 hertz that modifies the sound. Yeah, and if, if we think of the output phase uh, of most synths, it um, uses envelope generators to shape the sound over time. And these normally have a graphical shape associated with them, marked ADSR, and basically that defines you know, attack, which is you know, the attack of the sound is how fast the sound sort of comes in. Decay, which is a setting which allows the sound to kind of fade down to a sustained tone. Sustain, which is the sustained hands level, and then release, which is you know, what say once you release the key of the synthesizer, the length of time that the sound takes to decay away at the end. Yes, and of course that's based on the physical characteristics of sound itself. And we spend a lot of time talking about uh, the physical nature of sound in the first couple of weeks of this course because it's a good knowledge of that that will help uh, learners in this uh, course to make their own sounds. Absolutely. And in our next video, um, you're going to look into some of the pioneers uh, of Synthesis Stephen through your next Musical Revolutionary segment. That's right, and we'll also be uh, showing some of the original synthesizers from the 1960s and early 70s.